Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedules to attend today's event. My name is Jim Chadbourne and I'm a solutions architect here at Predator. In the past 30 years, I've seen many changes within IT to deliver business value. However, most of those changes also introduced further challenges for data preservation and security. Solutions such as email, shared storage, virtualization, cloud adoption, and even containerization They've all played a part to improve and modernize business services, but they also introduce headaches for the backup admins. Today, I'd like to share my thoughts on how backup solutions can help businesses to recover without having to pay the ransom. So malicious attacks have been happening for, for many years now. As threats evolve, this poses bigger challenges on organizations to stay operational. As IT evolves to take on new workloads, both on-premise and in the cloud, we need to ensure that cybersecurity evolves just as fast. Bad actors come in many forms, including human error, software errors, malicious code, and internal disgruntled employees. Ransomware can infiltrate business services and lay dormant for many months before being triggered by a future event to maximize business impact. We need to be vigilant at all times. Research by Sonic Wall shows that in 2020, almost 35 ransomware attacks were reported just for September. This is more than double the number of attacks for the same period in 2019. Paying the ransom is not the only answer, as it simply funds the bad actors into developing a more complex, robust attack. Business recovery is made possible with solid backup plans. Some notable cyber attack statistics include not Petia, caused one company in the States to have to pay in excess of $310 million. 34% of data breaches involved internal actors. Predictions suggest that organizations have a one in three chance of experiencing a uh, ransomware attack within the next two years. When considering IT budgets for backup solutions, we need to consider the business cost due to data loss following a ransomware attack. The longer an organization takes to recover data, the greater the risk to brand reputation, thereby forcing customers to move elsewhere. In order to minimize the impact of these attacks, you need to plan, secure, and test all aspects relating to data. Due to the ever-changing nature of an attack, a continuous preventative cycle is required rather than a one-off process. When planning a resilient solution, you should include who is responsible for deciding and implementing the plan. That should be the IT staff who could be doing the work, business owners who potentially could be deciding what the service criticality is and what the order is to, to recover business, all the way up to the C-level execs who, are, who should be agreeing the plan and potentially approving future spend to bolt boost the plan. What goes into the, the, the plan? So service criticality is key. Equipment provision, who is providing the equipment? Where is it being provided? How do we build the, the equipment? What software do we use? Where do we get the software from? Yeah, where is the backup media held? Is it in an offsite vault? And how do we get hold of that media? What personnel are in, involved? What access credentials should we be used? Following an attack, our IT systems will are likely to be down. How do we log into those machines in order to start the recovery process. Where is the plan to be executed? Do we go into an isolated network on site? Do we move to an alternate site or do we go into a, a cloud location? Where is the plan itself stored? Again, if that plan is stored on the IT systems we've just lost, you lose access to those plans in order to be able to recover. Under what circumstances should we execute part or all of the plan? Do we execute the plan if we lose a server, a building, the entire business? How do we communicate with the rest of the business if IT is down during the attack? Ransomware defense also needs to consider security. So what access controls do we have in place today and what do we have in place for when we're recovering? So who's got access to the systems? Who has access to these sites we've chosen for uh, recoverability. What protocols do we, are we going to allow people to use? 
what systems can have remote access? If we've lost our business services and we've lost everything there and we recover somewhere else, how do I, our business access those systems? Encrypting data at rest and reducing access to the keys will help it reduce the impact of any data theft. Backup yeah, is really key. Ensure all important data is backed up. Don't leave anything to chance. Make sure you include shared services such as the DNS, Active Directory, etc. Business services are reliant on those. If we've lost everything, we cannot log into the systems. So think about how we actually go through and log in. Patching of those systems. Ensure all systems are patched regularly to include key security fixes. And don't forget to patch the backup system. Too often we see that the backup system was built several years ago and has not been patched since. All defense mechanisms should be tested. So when we're looking at uh, the system, check for vulnerabilities within the environment. Use external service penetration organizations to find out how easy it is for somebody to gain access to your data. Test the recoverability of your business. Don't test individual servers in isolation. Cover a business service. So if you have a data warehouse that recognizes an Oracle database, an application server, bit of middleware, end user workstations, test the whole lot end to end. Don't rely on something that being there, you know, following a ransom attack. Too often we see recovery only test things in isolation and then make use of kit that was, was already there. You cannot guarantee in ransomware that any of your systems will be available. Look at the impact of any change that you're planning to do. Will the changes you're planning create unnecessary business risk? Adding new workloads to the, to the environment, can it add risk if nobody knows how to back them up? Yeah, do you have enough, environment, enough storage to back up any, any new environments? Moving to cloud, yeah, it could have a significant impact on your ability to back it up if you haven't got the right tool sets in place. Don't forget to repeat the entire process yeah, if anything was discovered when you did the testing. If you have any changes to personnel, make sure they are fully understand things and go through the entire process again. If you're changing business services, whether that's introduction of new functionality, upgrades, moving to alternate locations such as other, other colo uh, sites or the cloud. When planning for ransomware recovery, we need to consider many things, including maintaining our backups following a 3-2-1 rule. So three copies of data on two different mediums. Ideally, one of those should be uh, uh, on a immutable storage and one of those uh, backups should be off site. Implement robust vulnerability and patch management. So make sure that everything end to end is patched to have all the latest security fixes. Yeah the backup server, the switches, the storage, the servers, everything end to end. Don't leave anything to chance. Define and implement minimum access rights. So only have the access to the systems that are needed. Yeah, lock down your backup server so that it doesn't have SMB shares open on them if you are using a Windows system. Use network segmentation to minimize the impact. So when we're recovering, recover into a sandbox environment. Check that for any signs of any you know, security exploit and close them down before you put it back into production. Perform regular testing to ensure recovery process is effective and fully understood. Yeah, if you have got new employees, go through that recovery process again with your new employees. When thinking about how to take back control of the estate following ransomware, we need to consider other things as well as the 3 2 one rule for, for backup. So if your production system runs on Windows, consider having your backup on an alternate platform such as Linux. So when a ransomware yeah, attack hits your Windows estate and destroys it, the chances it's not going to infiltrate your backup system if it's on a different platform. Monitor your system for changing backup policy or backup activity an alert where necessary. So ransomware could be encrypting your data. It could be changing some of the, the records within the data. This could be seen within the backup state 
under changes in backup activity. So more data being backed up, lower uh, deduplication rates could be an impact of a ransomware attack is, uh, is in place. Modernize your backup solution to take advantage of, of newer, newer things. So things like immutable storage, security enhancements such as encryption, artificial intelligence to potentially protect against potential attacks. Investigate functions within in your backup solution, either by modernizing your backup solution, yet if you haven't already done it. So things like secondary authorization for admin changes. So with Spectrum Protect, we can actually have a, a secondary authorization. So an admin cannot approve changes for themselves if, it, if, if it's been set up that way. This prevents a script from going through and creating changes and deleting things yeah, without being approved by a physical person. Consider using things like retention sets, whereby we can have an immutable long term retention that can't be tampered with. Consider things like uh, gapping to tape. Tape cannot be tampered with if it's if it's if it's not been physically connected to the to the estate. Look at exploit detection AI, so change in the ingestion due to duplication rates. Lock down the server to the protocols it needs. So don't have all the protocols open. Only have protocols that where you need it. So a remote access virus secure uh, shell is probably most of the thing you, you need as well as the, the uh, ability to do backups. Sharing infrastructure can save costs, but also includes risks. So if you have the same storage infrastructure for backup and for production, what happens when that storage infrastructure gets hit or, or dies? You've lost both backup and production. So when we're looking at the yeah, uh, systems, yeah, back up all of your business services. Don't rely just on, on replication at the application layer between different sites. Any virus that or ransomware that hits on primary site will get replicated automatically to the secondary. Document all recovery processes. Yeah, don't rely on the individual that created those processes because the chance is anything that's missing will still be in their head and they'll yeah, slot in the, the changes when they do the recovery. If it's a different person doing the restore, they may not be able to understand what the recovery process was. Test recovery yeah, on a regular basis so that everybody understands those documentations. Don't rely on a yearly yeah, test of, of recovery of a subset of services. Typically, having a, a one to two week session during the year doesn't have enough time to test all business services. And you end up with false positives because you can't test it, therefore you can't fail it. Perform regular reviews of your backup solutions, see whether or not your systems meet the requirements of the business. Yeah, when moving to cloud, don't assume cloud services are backed up automatically. You need to take care of it, it's still your data. When planning, plan for recovery. Don't assume backup performance is everything. You backing up things within an eight hour window when you're only doing 5% might be okay for backup. But when you then look at recovering the data, your recovery could take several weeks to come back. Does that meet your SLA? Maintain currency of your backup solution. Don't rely on a legacy infrastructure for backup. Yeah, automate where possible. Don't rely on manual tasks. More importantly, when we are pulling data back from following a ransomware attack, scan that data for signs of exploit before we put it into the production environment. Don't simply assume that it, because we've recorded it, it's 100% safe. When we're looking at how long to keep things for and where to keep them, take advice from senior business advisors and, and risk officers. Yeah, they will know what you need to keep from for how long. Don't settle for an inferior solution that meets budget but doesn't meet business requirements. Best events you can have against ransomware is to have a current tested backup of all critical data. Keep those backups isolated from the network so they too aren't encrypted by ransomware. So let's all fight back, secure your backups today and don't be held to ransom. So once again, thank you for your time. Hope you found this session useful and enjoy the rest of the sessions. Thank you.